what up though this your boy doc and by the title you already see who it is before i get into it i gotta say this is one of the greatest comedians in my lifetime that i've seen every time i've seen him perform or hear him perform he's always have you dying laughing and he loves to kick a lot of game to people i gotta say to y'all for doc x tv i got tk kirkland on the line how you doing sir I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I wanted to jump straight into it, but before I get into one of the main things that I was asking you about as far as the initiatives of uh, what you were trying to do for Big Meech, you being a comedian and, you know, going from state to t state, one of the main things I wanted to know is what is some of the game that you want people to soak up when you go from state to state? Well, you know, life is a journey, and everybody knows I came up as a big hustler, I've been a little bit of everything. College graduate, Olympic star, um, business mogul, and people my past has caught up with me. And it's good that people are finding out that, yeah, I was a hustler back in the day. You know, I did have beef with um, Shug. I did have beef with Pump. I did have beef with a little bit of everybody. But at the end of the day, everybody respected me. But I want people to understand they can persevere. Right. What I mean by persevere is, you got to play the hand that you dealt because life, life is a chess game. And just like you said, most people don't want to get preached to, but my philosophy is at least you heard it. Right. So by me going through life and um, being a teacher at, at these things called Upper Bound Program, student the Upper Bound uh, Master's Degree, um, putting out wellness programs in Columbus, Ohio, for the gentleman named John Gregory, getting people to go get their degree, um, and also getting into politics to the point where, from a street perspective, that people come to me and I just have a way of just uh, influencing people in a positive way to the point that February 25th, I'm getting a street named after me. And when I met with these people from the NAACP the president, the senator and governor of New Jersey, who have been following me for years, they were telling me how they was going to honor me. Right. And because I was so busy, I turned this shit down, to be honest with you. I'm like, I ain't got no fucking fuck on those streets be named after me. For real, I really just say this. Right. And because of my daughter, my daughter, I told my daughter one day, and she said, Dad, you know, that's my name, too. You know, because I'm a Trinity Kirkland, so I'm, 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 it's going to be TK Kirkland now. And when she said that, it made me realize this is bigger than what I thought. Right. I called them back. They was ecstatic. They were explaining to me how they had been following me for a long time, how powerful I was. And they asked me out of the blue, what would I like to do? And somewhere, somehow, it came into my life that something said, can we pardon Vic me and his brother? Right. It was just, I don't really know them like that. It's just that I know some people deserve a second chance in life. And they just came into my mouth. Like, it was just God's sense. So... We're going through the procedures now. We felt like the, the committee, they've done their research. They felt that the Meach family, Vic Meach and his brother, was wrongfully accused, meaning if there had been any white Italians or white people, they would have never got 30 years. They probably got 20 or 10. So two things are going to happen. Either I'm going to get them pardoned or we're going to get their sentence reduced. Right, right. One or two. And they've already done like 15. So yeah. it's possible that if we lower their sentence to uh, 20 years, and that's more than half, it's possible they could be getting out in the next couple of years instead of another 15 years. Right, right, definitely. Because that's one of the things as far as us here in Detroit, you know, of course, keeping up with them. And they were saying, you know, especially on Big Meach end, I'm not 100% sure on South Southwest T end, but it was a first-time offender. And like you said, you know, if it was anyone else, that he wouldn't have got that much time. And I was just wondering as far as, because that was the main thing I wanted to try to help raise awareness to what you were doing. Is there anything that, like, the fans can do? Is it a petition, or is this more just with your no, connections? Is, no, no petition or nothing. This is straight who I know and on the, uh, on the ears and heart of some powerful people. And that's the only way it can be done. Because at the same time, I'm trying to get a petition signed that will put a police officer, police officer shooting any on un um person, 25 years to life mandatory. Mm. The only thing about that is that the cops, what people don't know, have laws of their own. We could sentence them to 25 
year. They can appeal it, and they have their own system where they could probably want to do in a year. Yeah, I'm not going to stop all this out like the other day. Right. What's going on with this as well is that I realize it can't be national yet. So we have to start in New Jersey and make it a New Jersey thing first, get it passed in New Jersey, and hopefully spread it. Now, we know it's an uphill battle. Mm-hmm. But we really try to pursue it because, see, my brother was also murdered by a cop. In 1995, they shot my brother seven times. Mm. So all these years, I never had avenue, never had, you know, I knew the people that could put something together to make it happen. So I want for any young man that if a cop kills them or shoots them, there's consequences. Right. Is it going to stop somebody from getting shot? No. But at least they know if it, if it passes and we want to bring attention to them, that there is some consequences for your decision, for your choices. Just like when we create, when we can make crimes and we do things, there's consequences. Well, we want consequences for the cops as well. And for the, the cops or good cops, we're not trying to say that you're bad. But what we do want you to do is hold the bad cops accountable. Right. Because it makes everybody look bad. Just like how... Um, when a, one black person does something on television and you hope it's a bad crime and you pray to God that you hope it's not a black person. And when there's a black person, damn it, it mm. has to be somebody black. Right. So it's things like that. So we want the cops to feel the same way. Right. Right. So it's gotten out of hand. And what happens in the black community in the same as athletes, they have their own little lane. You have somebody over here doing something. You have somebody over here doing something. And when you do stuff like that, um, nothing gets done. Right. Nothing gets done at all. How do you feel about Trump coming into office on January the 20th? Well, you got to give him a spot. The motherfucker pulled up a cold miracle. Right. And I'm down for miracles. It shows you, see, what people are looking at with Donald Trump is a bad thing. The, the great thing is Donald Trump pulled off something that you didn't think could be possible. Right. So, by him doing something that you didn't think possible, Obama pulling something up that you didn't think possible, it goes to show you that anything is possible. Right. So, whatever dream that you have, can nobody tell you no? You just got to put your best foot forward and apply pressure and keep it moving. Right. Do you think with him having the business experience that he have? running America like it, because basically America would be in from capital, you know, capitalism, you think that would be a, a something good on his behalf, you know, running America like well, a business? Well, we don't know. See, everybody has an opinion, and one thing I can always say, I'm not psychic, nobody is. We right. got to give the man a shot. Now, I'm not a Trump fan. I'm just a realist. Just right. like when Obama won, people felt the same way. It wasn't to this magnitude, because what Trump did, he put too much ego, too much perk. On, on, on his um, presidential run. So he got in. Let's see, hopefully he'll do well, and we take it from there. Cause you never know. Four years, we could talk shit. If he does well, he does well. If he does bad, guess what? Everybody will come out and vote and elect another president. Right. Do you believe, from your perspective, that is more important for people to try to vote for the presidential elect elections or to do more things locally with their local government? I think both are important. What we need to do is start with our youth because we've got men and women out here having babies. We're not raising them right. They're out here doing their own. They don't respect nobody. They're out here killing one another. Um, very few is finishing school. So when you start that in some of your own communities, like they mean this for real because you got the Jews and the whites and the kids, the college becoming doctors, and we need black female male judges. We need black female and um, male DAs. We need black more black police chief officers. You know, we definitely need this. And nobody is, 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 is giving the people the knowledge to go down this particular way. So this is what I'm here for. I'm gonna make you laugh. I'm gonna make you think. I'm gonna intimidate you. I'm gonna inspire you. But the choice is up to you. Which one will you choose? Right, right, definitely. And you say you have a show that's coming up in Detroit on January the 25th. Yes, January 20th, January 21st. Um, Benji Brown, Tony Roberts, and myself. Okay, and my one of my last questions yes. would be. As far as when you say, you know, in the black community that it's different things that we need to do within ourselves, what do you think is like 
the largest disconnect in between the youth and I guess I wouldn't I don't necessarily call the older heads I, oh geez the people with the wisdom because when I was growing up it was like you was taught to listen more than you talk and listen to the ones that got you know some age because they they made it to that age not being a fool even though there are old right, fools it was, it was called respect their elders well it's a, it's a combination of a lot of things young people having children it's a combination of a lot of young black men in the 80s went to prison so there was no fathers in the house there's women who out here trying to be mothers and fathers but they wind up getting heart disease because that's the number one killer among black women and and you had this combination of men going to jail, Afro-American women not wanting to listen to other men, no one wants to respect the black man, and then the black man out here just laying down with anybody without doing their due diligence because the men out here messing with women who are beneath them. And what I mean by beneath them, um, equally yoked. So they're going after ass more so than ass and intelligence of a woman that got a job. Right. And this all sets everybody back. And men are just sticking their penises into anyone without taking the girl's back for how she's raised, uh, who was a parent, um, what's her education, is she a lady, does she have wisdom, all these type of things. So it all creates confusion. It's a, um, a toxic nightmare. Right. With the, with the rise... I don't know if it's just online or if you see these I see this type of stuff at your shows with the rise in feminism and like and the reason why I'm asking you this question when you're saying finding women that's equally yoked and doing you know some of the, some shows some can because everything is so sensitive nowadays do the women right, appre- sure. do the women appreciate the game that you kick at your shows do they leave offended or do you think it wakes them up I think you get a combination of all but if you ask me what I care I don't give a fuck <laughs> I come to hurt you because I want you to be mad. I want you to kind of hate me because you'll remember me for the rest of your life. Right. And if you hate me and remember me for the rest of your life, you will try to do the right thing. Because at my show, you get exposed. You know, you can have a fake nigga there pretending that he really a nigga, and once I'm done talking my shit, a bitch is looking at her man differently. Mm-hmm. Then on the same on, on 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 the same page, you turn the page, you got a man there. Look at his girl, talk about, damn, this bitch is a, a liability. She's not an asset. So it's confusion on both parts. Yep. I've seen guys hit me on Instagram and tell me they broke up with their bitch because they saw my show. <laughs> right, yeah. I've definitely seen it. It's a true story. Right. So, like I said, I come either, like I said, you're going to either learn, I mean, going to intimidate you, inspire you. But I want women to win, I want men to win. And if they could pull this off, we'll be a, a lot more happier. I think so, anyway. Right. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, I appreciate your time. Do you really mess with the social media? Do you be real active on social media where you want to give out? Yeah, I'm real on it. Okay. Do you, do you want to give out your social media outlets for people to, you yeah, know, to keep my, up with you? Um, yeah, my ID, everybody who's listening to this and follow me is at TK underscore Kirkland. And Kirkland is spelled K I R K. L A N D. All right. It's TK Kirk. Make sure you check out my podcast with the Breakfast Club. It drops June, I mean, January 19th called Teeth of the Motherfucking Day. You can find it on iTunes and iCloud. Just listen to it. Follow my Instagram. Everything will be posted. Okay. Well, once again, I appreciate all the game and all the comedy that you give out, man. I appreciate your time. You're welcome, my man. God bless you, too. All right. All right. God bless you, too. <laughs> <laughs>